Oh, how well do I remember how I doubted day by day. I did not know for certain my sins were washed away. Then the Spirit tried to tell me I would not the truth receive. But now I've decided I will let myself believe. He's real, he's real. Yes, I know, I know he's real. I thank God my doubts are settled. And I know that he is real. Hey, Nisi, this is your babysitter. <laughs> he's real. He's real. Yes, I know my God is real. I thank God my doubts are settled. And I know he's real. He's really real. We got a few more minutes. Down, at, down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. Oh, that to my heart was the blood applied. A hey, dick, glory to His name, singing glory to His name, precious name. Glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. And my dad was saying, get right with God, and do it now. Get right with God, he will show you how. Right down at the cross, where he shed his blood. Get right with God, get right, get right with God. Good evening, Sister Brenda, Sister Lois. Get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Right down at the cross where he shed his blood. Get right with God, get right, get right with God. Good evening, Mo. Old friends, Sister Nadine, good to see you. <laughs> oh, God, it's, it's such a blessing. But God has allowed us through the years to still be able to come together. And, you know, we, I thank God for every day. Oh, that's my friend, Sister Savannah, good to see you. I got, I got, I got my, my niece, she's watching us too. Or I should say, the person I babysit, my her first babysitter. <laughs> oh, that was oh God, Binghamton, New York. That, that was oh God, a long time ago. So I know your age, Kimberly. Don't don't play with me. We are going to discuss a subject that. I'm not saying it hasn't been taught. <laughs> I'll call you Roy if that make you happy. But, but what's happening, big bro? Good to see, good to see you and hear you. I've I've, I've been through the storm, but uh, I'm out now, <laughs> and I'm talking about a storm. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, I am going to try to teach a subject that, that is avoided because we think it doesn't apply. But I want you to realize that Jesus did not teach the New Testament. The New Testament writings came about about 300 years after Jesus ascended. Jesus, in his teachings in Luke, is teaching from 
the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, basically. And when he came, he said he not he didn't come to destroy the law. In other words, do away with the law, but fulfill the law. The law was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. If he had taken away the law, we would not be worshiping. And we, we still, I ain't going to say we, that those that disobey the law, because he said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, and it was not done. And now Constantine has declared the day of the sun, the first day of the week, to be the Sabbath, which is not the Sabbath always and always will be the seventh day from six o'clock Friday to six o'clock uh, on, on Saturday is the seventh day. In Genesis, in, in when God recreated the earth, he did not start in the daytime. He started at night. Evening and morning was the first day, the second day, the third day, and so forth. And on the seventh day, he rested. He rested on what we call Saturday or the seventh day. But we at a, at a point now where we are in agreement with Constantine, I believe it was in AD, AD 320, I don't remember when it was, but, but it's not that important. But he declared the he declared the first day of the week the day of the sun. And what do we do? We worship on the day of the sun. Sunday, which which is not scriptural. That's why you see me teaching at six o'clock Friday evening, which is the beginning of the Sabbath. Good evening, Sister Loretta, Greta, Barbara, good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. And sister sister Taylor, good to see y'all. Now now, those of you that come on after me, I ain't saying nothing. Hi. <laughs> now, go with me to where we'll, we'll be in Leviticus 23 for quite a while. I'm not sure how long I will be in this book. But it'll probably be another week. But, uh, but we are to remember the holy days. Not the holidays. The holy days are of God. The feasts are of God. The holy days are man-made, like Christ the Mass, Ishtar or Easter, which is on Halloween, a naked baby with wings on Valentine, and you as on and on, rabbits laying eggs. And you celebrate that, and the merchants are so happy with you because you're going broke, and, they, and they're, they're increasing their income over stupid stuff. Though, now, let's deal with holiday, not, not the holiday, but the holy days. There are seven holy days, and I, I think I, I went over them, but just in case I, I didn't, let me, let me name them before I, I go, because I talked Passover, but we'll go back to Passover before, before we do the communion, okay? But the first one is the Passover. The second one is what we're going to deal with today, as well as us, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The third is the uh, Feast of First Fruits, or Pentecost. Penta means the 50th day. Uh, the uh, fourth one is the Feast of Trumpets. The fifth one is the Day of Atonement. The sixth one is the Feast of Tabernacles. And the seventh one is the Last Great Day, which is adjacent to the Feast of Tabernacles. And, and it's, it's actually considered the eighth day because it's a separate feast. Now, we talked about Passover last week, and, and we'll, we will go back over it just a little bit before, I, before we, we do communion. I want to talk today about this feast of unleavened bread. The feast is always at evening. Eve, evening comes from the uh, from the Hebrew ereb, e r e b, which means dusk or sundown, and it it begins at sunset. and And we we find that Passover is to be kept at the beginning of the 14th day of the month. This crazy calendar for April 
has Passover and Jesus in the grave at the same time. And the, the calendar is a total lie, but we go by it. He cannot be in the grave and, and eating Passover with his disciples at the same time. He died on the Passover. He, at the beginning of the Passover, he, he, he ate what we call, he ate the Last Supper, and then he did the communion. After the communion, he went, he went out in the garden to pray, the Garden of Gethsemane, and he died between the hours of 12 and 3 on Passover day. Before Passover ended, Jesus was already dead. Get that? From the 6th to the ninth hour on Passover. He, the Lamb of God, that was the perfect time for him to be slain. On the, the Passover lamb was slain at Passover. Get that in your head. It makes sense. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world was slain, was a bloody mess, on Passover. The cross was not no more than an altar that, that you, you stretch the Passover lamb on as they did Jesus. Now, I'm not, now let, let's go on with the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because now that, that we have been justified by faith because Jesus died on the cross, we are, and we have been forgiven of our sins, we're saved from the wrath to come through that lamb, now we're dealing with the festival or the Feast of Unleavened Bread that gives, gives us a, a lot about what, why this was done. In uh, Leviticus, in, and I'm sorry, in Exodus 12, which coincides with uh, Leviticus 23, 12, in Exodus 12, verse 15 through 17, God told Moses, Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whosoever eats leavened bread from the first day, which is from Passover, until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. See, this, this, this came before they left Egypt. On the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. Not this stuff y'all be doing and shouting and, and speaking in, whatever you're speaking in. But, but what we need to understand, that there should be a holy convocation on the seventh day, on the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation for you. Stay with me. I'm, I'm in Exodus 12, verse 15 to 17. No manner of work shall be done on them. For those of you that, that, that say you're celebrating a convocation, you should be that seventh day. Your vacation time should be scheduled around that like you do Labor Day and Christmas and all that. Your vacation, schedule your vacation around this time. What time? Okay. Around the 15th of April. 14th and 15th of April. No manner of work shall be done on them. That's just like a vacation, isn't it? But that which everyone must eat, that only may be prepared by you. Prepare your own, your own meal. So you shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for on, the, on that same day I have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Look at the therefore. Get this last verse. Underline therefore. Therefore ye shall observe this day throughout your generations for what? An everlasting covenant. It doesn't stop. Everlasting. It's just, just like God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. This is everlasting. Even though Pastors, I know you've been doing, you, you're setting this aside, but not so. This is an everlasting ordinance because that's basically what we do when you, you and I as pastors serve this communion as an ordinance. We're to do it forever until he, you're showing forth the Lord's death until he comes. This is actually what we're doing, the Passover, along with the unleavened bread. And notice that the festival of unleavened bread came when God delivered Israel out 
Oh, uh, from he delivered them from something. He delivered. He's a deliver. He delivered them from something. He delivered them from evil, from from Egypt. So Egypt represents a type of sin. So the symbolism of this feast, this festival, pictures true true Christians. I ain't talking about the wannabes. True Christians coming out of spiritual Egypt. True Christians coming out of spiritual Egypt, which is sin. True Christians coming out of sin. Because living itself is a symbol of sin. Get that in your spirit. Leaven is a symbol of sin. What did Jesus warn his disciples about, about the uh, sinful teachings of the, of the Pharisees? He said, take care, take care. Beware of the leaven or the sin of the Pharisees and Sadducees. That's, that's in Matthew 16 and 16. Write it down. Matthew 16 and 16. I'll give you time. I hope you got pencil and paper and especially your Bibles. If you don't, you have not paid any attention to this pastor. You can't remember all this. I can remember some. I've got the reason I wrote my book because my wife told me that everybody ain't in my big head like that. So the name of my book, I hope y'all get, is scratching my head with a two-edged sword because this stuff that I'm telling you is in my head, and as well as a book. I, now, I'm, I am not a scholar. I don't, don't go there with that. Don't go there. Because leaven, leaven does what? What you 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 young women y'all 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 get these old pop up biscuits in in the can, in the can and stuff. But you oh no I, I don't know if any folk my age is doing it anymore. Make biscuits. Those of you that make biscuits, the real stuff. Leaven causes the the the, the bread what to rise up, to to puff up, and that's the attitude of, of sin or self will, self rising. <laughs> Uh, because it causes us to puff up and do our own thing. Living, sin, causes us to puff up and do our own thing. And I'm tired of y'all saying, the Lord knows my heart. And I told you about that situation. The heart is dreadfully sinful, and he knows it. That's why he's trying to create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you. And so he can restore the joy of his salvation within you. So leaven tends to spread itself throughout the whole dough. Just as unche unchecked sin will spread through the church. I told you to keep that leaven. Once you, once you have that dough, you, you take some of it, you, about, probably about a, about a handful, and you put it in a jar and you save it. For when you make the biscuits the next time, because that 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 leaven, that is, is, it now has leaven to, to cause that next uh, thing of biscuits to rise. It cannot rise without the leaven. But what I'm saying, if sin goes unchecked in the church, you do not have a place of worship. You you're having a party. Oh, we had a good time at church today. He didn't tell you to have a good time. Oh, we went and got our praise on. He didn't tell you to get your praise on. He told you to come to worship him in spirit and in truth. It's not about the, 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 the music. It's not about the shouting. It's not about the speaking. And those of you, in your, some of you real, but, but you know some of you make up some of them tongues. Y'all need to stop. He come on a Honda Yamaha Suzuki Kawasaki and leave him a Mercedes. Hallelujah. Stop it. God knows, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. God knows when sin is left unchecked, you are go 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 to First Corinthians, First Corinthians five and First Corinthians five uh, verses six and seven. Because I'm gonna show you what leaven does. I'm gonna show you what sin does in the church. And we, now we're talking about the feast of unleavened bread, which we're keeping. That's what we're doing. We're remembering the feast. It's an ordinance to be kept. You ain't got to kill nothing. You just obey the ordinance. Do what, do what he says. Now, I told you that a little bit, it doesn't take but a little bit to live in the whole lump, to mess. It, it doesn't take much. First Corinthians 5. 
verse 6 and 7. What are we supposed to do with folk that have come in the church that are creating a disturbance? I know what you said. You, you take our scripture out of context. Let the wheat and the tear grow together. That's a kingdom message, not the church. What does the Apostle Paul tell us to do? Purge out. Kick them out. The old living. Because that old living, that rascal, those people are affecting you. As long as they are around you and giving them fake testimonies, and, and you, you'll end up seeing some of the thing, same things they're having. They're seeing because it sounds good, like try the Spirit, buy the Spirit. It's, it's, it's nowhere in Scripture. Like, like a, a spare the rod, spoil the child, nowhere in Scripture. But we say it because we have allowed that leaven to do what? Leaven the whole lump. Purge out the whole leaven, that, that what? That you may be a new lump. If any man be in Christ Jesus, what is he? A new lump, a new creation. That old leaven, that old stuff is passed away. And behold, all things have become new because you have purged out that old lump. And says, so since you, you truly, we're unleavened. We're unleavened. How do we know? For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. He purged it out. He, he was sacrificed for us. Passover. Now, <laughs> normal Christians are satisfied being saved and they think they can do anything they want to do. God will forgive you. Uh, yes, but shall we continue with the lump? Shall we continue with the leaven? That grace may abound. God forbid. God forbid. You're losing out on rewards. You, you, salvation is a process. Get me. I taught that. Now I'm, I'm going to have to teach it again. Salvation is a process. According to 1 Corinthians 1, 1, was it 1 and 18. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. <laughs> We're being saved. We are being saved. Let me make sure I got that right. Yeah, 118. If you think you can do anything you want to do, you've got this thing wrong. For the preaching of the cross. See verse 18, 1 Corinthians 1 18, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. It's falling on deaf ears. But unto them which are saved, so see the difference? But to them which are saved, it is the power of God. Now what is the power of God? The dunamis, the dynamite, the Holy Ghost, it is the power of God. I've preached to a whole lot of folk, but not all are saved. But those that received, those that received this, right, they, they became the sons of God. Right now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is because that old leaven has been purged out. We have become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Slow me down. Okay, Pam, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Pam told me I talk too fast. I done told y'all to slow me down. Y'all ain't listening either. Slow, slow the brother down. I don't get upset. <laughs> Pastors are subject to the Spirit too. And we are co-laborers together with God. If, if he can't receive from, from, from right from the congregation, you need to sit down somewhere. Now, remember, remember, I just gave you of uh, 1 Corinthians 1.18. I said salvation is a process. It's a process. We're now being saved. And we will ultimately be saved. If we endure to the end. We shall be saved from the wrath to come. 
we shall receive great rewards. We were saved by grace through faith. We're being saved, which is sanctification, laying aside every weight. And we will ultimately be saved, which is glorification. When we change from this mortal body into immortal, we become spirit. That we, this, you die a natural body and you raise a spiritual body, your spirit. That, that stuff we put in the grave, and I, I done told my folks, don't, don't put my good stuff in no, in, in no casket. Don't waste my money. Because that's the last time you're going to see this face. You know, you, you're not, you're not going to see this anymore. En enjoy. Enjoy the 75-year-old face because I am spirit, man. The only thing you see is the casing right now. You ne you've never seen Robert Brown in your life because I've never seen him. Right now, we're the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. Do we know that when he shall appear, we shall be? The Holy Ghost is in me. It's in you if you are born again. Let me go on. The, I'm, talk, I'm talking about the feast. I'm talking about the feast. Okay. And Paul explains in Romans 5 and 10, for if when we were enemies, well, when we, we were 11, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, the Passover, much more having been reconciled to Him, we're going the the ultimate. We will be ultimately saved. We're going to be saved by His life, saved by His life, which is Romans five and ten. So if we just observe the Passover, if we just observe communion every now and then, some of you just just do it during homecoming, which is which is crazy once a year. Just as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So you saying you don't, you don't eat but one meal a year. You're gonna be anorexic. So, we so so we observe the Passover. If you don't, you you leave Jesus hanging on the cross. End of the story. That's why I told Joe when they put that to his mouth, he didn't take it. He said it is finished. He's, it's finished as far as as the drinking of. He said he will not drink. Of the fruit of the vine again. Till I do it again in the kingdom. He did not take it. But that was not the end of the story. It was not even finished on the cross. If it had been finished on the cross. We would die in our sins. Because he had to go to the grave. And get up again. And it's still not finished. It won't be finished until we. Until we. Uh, we go to him. Until Till this earth is redeemed. When the earth is redeemed, we can say it is finished. He, he said it is finished twice. He said it is finished in the, I think, 16th or 17th chapter of, of St. John. When he, it's the 17th chapter. When he prayed the Lord's Prayer, not the disciples' prayer, by our Father which art in heaven and all that, that we say the Lord's Prayer. That's the disciples' prayer. But when he prayed the Lord's Prayer, he said, I have finished the work that you have called me to do. He was finished. No more healing until Peter messed up as usual. Cut off the man's ear. And Jesus had to go back to healing. That's the last time he healed because of something crazy Peter did. Cut off the, cut off the servant's ear and he healed it. That's, that was, then it was finished as far as the healing on earth. I have finished the work that you have called me to do. Not on the cross. Because it is not yet finished. The earth has to be redeemed. Help me, Holy Ghost. What did Now, go to Matthew 19 and 17. Because I, we've got to get this across. What did Jesus say we had to do if we want to enter into eternal life? What are we supposed to do? I know you, you want to avoid it. You want to avoid it. What does Matthew? Did I say Matthew? Yeah, Matthew 19 and 17. Put it in the safe. What does the safe do? Keep. What does he tell us to do? Mmm. 
Thank you, Deke, for, for, for following me. Thank you. Matthew 19 and 17. Jesus said, why are you even calling me good? There's none good but one, which is what? God. But if you want to enter into life, do what? Do what? Keep the commandments. Plural. And there's more than ten. Okay. There's more than ten. There are others. But but he's but, but <laughs> they they said to him, which one do you, do you say? Don't murder, don't commit adultery. Well, that leaves a whole lot out. Don't steal, that leaves a whole lot more out. That's not bear for all. Oh, don't lie. Honor your father and your mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. Boy, the law hasn't been destroyed. We still got to obey the commandments. Commandments. So, and, and, and he also told us in Mark 1 and 15 to repent. If you don't re repent, you, you, you know, there's no need you trying to keep commandments. You got to completely turn away from sin from the leaven and go the other way. What other way? The way of righteousness. In other words, God requires that we make a underline this word, covenants. Remember I talked about Abraham and the covenant is a, an agreement and, and a binding agreement between you and God. And in that binding agreement, you're telling him you're going to put sin out of your life and stop breaking his spiritual law and start keeping what he expects us to do through his word to follow him, keeping his commandments. Now, how are we saved? I, 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 I talk about this every every time I teach. And I, well, I, I'll, give, I'll give you the, the, the scripture, uh, Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and it's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Your work, you cannot work your way. Lord, you're talking about I tarry and I work for the Holy Ghost. You didn't work for nothing. The Holy Ghost is a gift. You that morning, morning, morning's bench is a joke. Yeah, I said it. Morning. You are saved by grace through faith. No begging, no pleading. It is the gift of God. If it wasn't the gift of God, you could boast. Lord, I worked for that. No, you did not. God gave it. God gave himself to you. Lest anyone should boast. That's in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. Now, you, you, <laughs> you're saying, okay, that proves we don't have to do anything to receive God's free gift. We don't need to keep God's law. But in the ver let's see in the very next verse in which Paul says that we are created in Christ Jesus for good works for good, we're created for good works which God had prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's the story. We should walk in them. Now, let's talk about this speech. We've got to obey him. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I know you, I don't know where Robin Hood barn is, but y'all said we go around it. I've never seen Robin Hood, Robin Hood or the barn. But the, this feast follows the Passover. In Leviticus 23, verse 6 to 8, and on the 15th day of the month, which is, what's on the 14th day? We talked about, what's on the 14th day? Passover. Passover is on the 14th day. And on the 15th day, the very next day, of the same month of April, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Yahweh. It's the feast unto the Lord. The feast is unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. 
in the first day you shall have a holy convocation. Don't do any work. Offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, to, uh, well, unto Yahweh, seven days. In this, and in that seventh day, here's another convocation. Two convocations. You shall do no work therein. That's Levit Leviticus 23, verse 6 to, verse, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 6 to 8. This feast of, of uh, last seven days, it, it includes what we call holy gatherings on the first day of the feast and the last day of the feast, which are convocations, convocations, holy feasts. The phrase holy convocation, I, write down this word. It, I've, got to use, I've got to use Hebrew words sometimes. It's Q-O-D-E-S-H, Kodesh. And the other word is M-I-Q-R-A, micro. It refers to a sacred or called out meeting. So on those two days, you have a sacred and called out meeting. And based on verse 2, verse 2, the meetings belong to the one who established these days in the beginning. Not man. It's Yahweh, our Father, which is in heaven. Keep these, this ordinance how long? Forever. You remember they had been traveling through Egypt and, and, and they, they left Ramses, or, well, our, the Pharaoh, on that 15th day after eating the Passover. And while they, were, they, they uh, won their freedom in the night of the Passover, they physically, get this, departed on the first day of unleavened bread. They departed on the first day of the feast. Now you and I are commanded to abstain from leavening our yeast during this time. The Israelites left the left, uh, Egypt in haste, in a hurry, but, and they were unable to put any leaven in, in that dough to make it rise. And that's why we're told to abstain from leavening, because, write this down, leaven often represents, number one, wickedness. Number two, malice. Number three, false beliefs. Number four, hypocrisy. Number five, corrupt politics. And number six, sin. I stopped at six, the number <laughs> man. Sinful. When they left Egypt, I want you to understand what, what, what they were doing spiritually. They left the sin of Egypt and of the world behind them. That's what you're supposed to do when you come to Christ. You leave the world. You leave sin behind you. And I want you to understand something else about this feast. It, it talks about agriculture. It was during this feast that they would, this, this, is, not a, this is not sheaf, okay, but, but they would wave a sheaf. Or first fruits of, barley, of the barley, barley harvest. They were waving it to Yahweh. They were waving at him. looking up, waving at him. And this sheaf points prophetically, go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22, 22. 
Are you there? I said they're waving the first fruits of the harvest. First fruit. First fruit. Un, un, first fruit. The first of the fruit. The first of the fruit. First Corinthians 15, verse 20 through 22. But now is Christ risen, the bread has risen, from the dead and become what? The first fruits of them that slept. Me and you, the first fruits of what? The first fruits of what? Of them that slept. For since by man came leaven or death, by man also came the resurrection from the dead. <laughs> For in Adam all die, even so in Christ we shall all be made alive. Let me go and read the 23rd verse. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that in Christ at his coming. These, the, the feast of unleavened bread prophetically pointed to Yeshua, the Messiah. And Paul states that the Messiah represents the first fruits of those of us of those that are resurrected or will be resurrected he's the first fruits he was the first against all mankind to be resurrected to eternal life this is this is in the feast this is in the feast of unleavened bread now so his, his at his resurrect to his resurrection the messiah Fulfill the first fruit sacrifice that was offered during this feast. I said at his resurrection, the Messiah fulfilled the first fruit sacrifice that was offered during this feast. <sighs> Do you see how the Old and New Testament harmonize? The Old Testament is not a dead book. That could be that's further from the truth. Let me ask you a question. What that <laughs> what Bible do you think Christ and the and the Messiah the, the Messiah and his apostles use? What Bible? What Bible? It wasn't the New Testament. Yeshua and his apostles used the Old Testament as their source of truth. I said he used the Old Testament as the source of truth. The law and the prophets and the Psalms. Because the New Testament, for you Bible scholars, was not canonized until three 25 after, after Christ died. That means that the official new covenant, a new testament, didn't come along to 300 years after the Messiah. It wasn't written until after he was resurrected. So what else do we learn from Paul in that scripture I read? For in Adam, what? All die. But in Christ, we're all made alive. It's only through Yeshua, the Messiah. Yes, I, I, I'm, Jesus is not his name. It's not, it's not his name. It was a name that, that Gabriel gave him for mankind. But I'm talking about Yeshua. His name is, without <laughs> Yeshua, the Messiah, we, ca we can't find everlasting life. There's nothing you and I can do to earn salvation. We can't earn, salvation is a gift. Now, this has reference to the second advent when he comes to establish his father's kingdom here on earth. 
but the first fruits was foreshadowed by this unleavened bread. You understand what I'm saying? That's what we're actually keeping the feast of unleavened bread because we recognize that him being the first fruits, we are going to get up later on. He is, he is the first one that rose as a man to eternal life. And we, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump. We're going to talk about the trumpet man, of God and the dead in Christ, the dead in Christ, the, the, the second fruit shall we rise first. We're going to rise to meet the first fruits in the air. Not to go to heaven, to meet the Lord in the air. We don't go to heaven when we leave here. We, that, there's some, some stuff that has to happen in the process. We all go to heaven at the same time. I know you love those songs. When we all get to heaven, what a day I rejoice in that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the lie. We go to meet the Lord in the air. When all of us die, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and us which remain are called up to meet the Lord in the air, then and only then will we proceed to go to heaven just for a little while. I don't even talk about it. Just for a little while. Because that's where the marriage supper of a lamb takes place where the prince, the, the, the Messiah, the prince, becomes father, the king of kings and lord of lords, which he is not at this present time. And no, I'm, I'm not a heretic. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. We're, we will be at the coronation. But let, but let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I, I thought I was going to be able to. Well, after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, what comes? The Feast of Weeks. Weeks. More than one. Penta. Cos. Penta means 50. That's not a religion. That is a time frame. That is 50 days. And in Leviticus 23, verse 15 and 16. And ye shall count unto you from the from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day which you saw, brought the sheaf of the wave of offering, seven Sabbaths, 49 days, seven, 49, 49 days, week of Sabbath, weeks of Sabbath, 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 every week, every week, every day of those weeks will be Sabbaths. Yeah, come on, y'all. Does it say seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Forty-nine days. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh sab the Sabbath, shall you number fifty days. After the seventh Sabbath. And ye shall offer a meat offering unto Yahweh, and ye shall proclaim on that selfsame day that it shall be a holy convocation unto you. <laughs> Are y'all still with me? And and uh, that's 15 and 16 and 21. And ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute. How long? How long? I didn't write this. How long? Forever in all your dwellings, throughout your generations. Your grandmama, your mama, me, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, throughout your generations. Forever. That's what I think. In forever. Forever. I don't, I don't have a definition. So, to establish this feast, Israel had to Count seven complete Sabbaths. Seven times seven is 49. This count began on the morrow of the weekly Sabbath that fell 
during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay? Meaning what we call Sunday or the day of the sun or the first day of the week. The start counting. This is where the Jews derive the name Shavat. S H A V U O T. Shavat. Shavat. Am I saying that right? Which in the Hebrew language means weeks, plural. Now, on this day is a holy convocation. Mm. Now, now, we're back to, agri to agriculture. We're back to wheat now because wheat had more value than barley. And now, what are they doing? They prepared two leavened, leavened, leavened loaves that were presented or waved before Yahweh as a first fruit offering. They were waving leavened. It wasn't unleavened. It was leavened. Biscuits. Okay. That's as, that's as good as I can put it. Unleavened. Versus leaven. They went. <laughs> on this day in the Old Testament. They prepared two leaven loaves. That were, were be, to be presented before Yahweh. As a first fruit offering. Because Jesus Christ rose. Rose. <laughs> ah, the bread rises. So what do what do they what do they symbolize? They signify Old and New Testament beliefs. Old Testament, New Testament. Old Testament, New Testament. Are y'all still with me? Ah, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm about to get happy in here. Y'all don't know how these things affecting me. <laughs> uh, y'all, excuse me. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh God. Mmm. The Old and New Testament. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it corresponds to the giving of the law the giving of the law the giving of the law in the Old Testament to the outpouring of the Spirit in the New Testament <laughs> outpouring now, according to rabbinic belief, and this, the law was delivered on this day, and the Bible does show that Israel was at Mount Sinai during this time in Exodus 19 and 1. They were at Mount Sinai. According to the law, that was given on the Feast of Weeks, something else happened of significance in the New Testament. Acts 2 and 1. It tells us that the Holy Spirit was poured out on this 50th day, which is Pentecost. Penta, that 50th day. And when the day of Pentecost had fully arrived, Eh? Oh God. And they were with one accord. They were together. There came a a sound from heaven. 
It didn't say it wasn't a wind, but it, it was as of, read your Bible, as of a mighty wind, a rushing, <laughs> mighty wind. It didn't fill them. It filled the whole house in which they were sitting. It filled the house. And after that, there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire and set upon each of them. It set upon them. Just like Jesus when he was baptized, what happened? He, that was the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost was in one place. The whole, Jesus, the Son of God, was in the water. The Father was above. The Holy Spirit was upon him. He was, as the Son of God, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he said, when he went in the temple, as the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, oh, my God. Mm. It came upon him. And it came upon these people because what folk don't bring out when Jesus got up on that next day, which was the first day of the week at evening, he appeared to these scared men that were behind closed doors. He came through the doors and said, fear not. Because he'd have to tell me to fear not. He said, he told him, I go away to prepare a place for you. I will come again and re receive, receive, unline the word receive in John 14. Receive you unto myself. What did he do? He said, receive me. Receive the Holy Ghost. Re they, were, they received the Holy Ghost inside them in the upper room before Pentecost. But on the day of Pentecost, Hallelujah. That same spirit that was in them came upon them and dynamite cannot explode without fire. Ah! The, ah! the Holy Ghost that was in them. Okay. Met with, with the Holy Ghost that's on top of them because he's, he's om, omnipresent. He's, <laughs> it filled the whole house. And what did they do? They began to speak with W-I-T-H is not the same as I-N, okay? It, they begin to speak with, 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 with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Uh-huh. They were filled with what was inside of them. We're not always filled. We have them in us. But he fills us for a purpose. He fills us for work. We can do nothing until he fills us and leads us and guides us into all truth. And when they, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others, not as they tried to he come on a Honda. The Spirit gave them others. They were not unknown tongues. They were known tongues. There were 16 different dialects that came from all over the world for the Feast of Penta, Pentecost, the 50th day. Uh, isn't it ironic how at a feast, the Old and New Testament came together at Penta, at a feast? <laughs> Remember the feast. The, the disciples are to worship God in accord of his feast day as he commanded. And those present received the gift of tongues. It comes from the from the Greek glossa, G-L-O-S-S-A, -S -S -A, means a known tongues, an actual known language. That is not a sign, and you are not a Pentecostal. Pentecost is a feast. Now, why did our Father choose an Old Testament feast? Why did he, 
He chose an Old Testament feast in which to provide his heavenly gift. So these feasts have purpose. Let me stop right there. We'll, 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 talk, about, we'll talk about the Feast of Trumpets next week. Do, do y'all have your y'all have your bread? And do you have and, and, and your and your wine? What we need to understand, this is not a ritual. This is an ordinance. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He there were wounds all over him. There was blood all over him. He was wounded for our sin, our transgressions. There were bruises on him. All over him. They would take a whip and, and put glass and steel at the end of it and every time they hit him, chunks would come out of his body. His body was broken. The thorns. I'm talking about he was hurt from top to bottom. The nails were in his hand was punishment. Because he was also nailed in his feet. His feet were crossed with, none, with nails in his feet and he would rise to try to breathe and it would hurt him. Hurt, it would hurt his feet. He died of heart failure. And then he was My God! It was in the dark. My God! Why? Why? Why have you forsaken me? He was saying this as a son of man. He did not die as a son of God. He became sin for us. He got on a cross that we need to be on. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, that beating of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed of all the sin sickness. He died for sin. Now, for those of you that are using this, this scripture for your headaches and things, stop it. He's talking about sin. Isaiah is talking about the sin bearer. And he died of heart failure. And there was so much blood coming out of him that the and, and, and the moment that blood hit the ground, did you notice what happened at the temple? There was an earthquake. The earth couldn't stand, couldn't hold the blood. The earth quaked, and the temple was open where you could see those priests sacrificing lambs. We at that time became priests. We could go into the Holy of Holies for ourselves because he opened the door. He cut down that 30-foot curtain from top to bottom that we can boldly enter into his presence. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And so much blood was there. It couldn't go nowhere but the ground. And you nurses know how much blood is in the body. The blood came out of him. And I believe that's why Isaac Watts had a vision. There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath the cross in the blood and lose all the guilt the stain because of him. He became sin for us. He became a curse for us. And by his stripes we are healed of every sin that you can name. But you didn't see it. Because the Lord, the Father, didn't look upon it. He could not look upon sin. He could not look upon sin and not do anything about it. So what did he do? He turned his back and allowed darkness to come. And guess who is the prince of darkness? He thought he had won. He's the, the prince of the power of the air. The prince of darkness was allowed to operate for three hours. But oh, when it was all over. Eh, when it was all over. When he died, there came lights. 
And that light was the light of men. And they took him off the cross. He's no longer there. He died for me and you. And that's what I want you to see. For I have received of the Lord. Do you have your stuff? I'm not using leaven. I'm using unleavened bread. But you, but you, 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 I understand you do what you got to do this time. I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and he blessed it. Father, I thank you for this time, for this bread that represents what you have done for all of us. And I ask that you bless it and let folks see what is being done through this ordinance. Amen. Blessed it. Then he break it and gave to his disciples. I'm giving to you. I'm giving it to you. Now take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like in like manner, living, <laughs> he took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he said, "This is the new covenant in my blood. As oft as ye drink it, do in remembrance of me." At that point, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. You and I can't go out to the Mount of Olives, but the last thing I do, I don't do anything else, pray or anything else after we do this, because he didn't. But one thing they did do, they sang a hymn. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I want you to remember this. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right till I die. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. Till I die. I will see y'all Friday, the Sabbath, the Shabbat at 6. We're still in Genesis. And I pray that you have, uh, you have completed reading the 19th chapter. And, the, and then actually that you read the 19th chapter of Judges also. Which is very similar. But uh, let's, let's read, finish reading the 19th chapter in 20 and 21. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Thank you for joining this preacher.